Coming at you live from DNHQ2 in beautiful South Pasadena. This is Blue Heaven Podcast. Hey, it's being slow today. That's rude. And it also delay. felt loud. Delay it. It. We are powered by the Overtime Podcast Network. What is up, Dodgers Nation? I am Clint. You know where you can find me on the internet machine? Uh, I'm real FRG on Twitter and Instagram. On the internet. The real FRG, in case you're wondering. But yes. that's not how you search it, so don't do that. But yes. I'm sure you could find it. Never, never met him. And this handsome guy on his left is Brooke. And uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter, at BrookeMe3. And you can find all of us, both of us, all of us, at DodgersNation.com, can't you? The, the very same. The you very absolutely same. can. Uh, on today's show, we have an exclusive chat with the newest Dodger, uh, it's not Matt. Me. Matt Beatty, uh, Cody Bellinger, you are ridiculous, and we got some stats That's with our good. friend like that. Rick. Rick's point. not here, but he came by and we hung out. He's right here. He's in our He's hearts. Spirit. Uh, one month concerns we got to chat about. I, th- I think um, that makes the most sense because we're at the one month mark, so we should be concerned about things. I'm concerned about a lot of things. I don't <laughs> know what is, we're talking about, but I'm just concerned. <laughs> that is science. Uh, yeah. We're gonna look at some polls. Walk away from it. Walk away. <laughs> And we're going to be visiting Manny in San Diego. But first, we have to give a shout-out. You guys over there on the stream see that little bug in the right-hand corner. Our friends at Sportscaster, that is C-A-S-T-R, sportscaster.com. You can be the star of your own show, just like us, but just don't be better than us. We can't be. Nobody. We're the best. We're the best. Whatever you need. With built-in graphics and access to special events. Should I not do it like that? Uh, You can look like a pro and sound like a pro. Just like Brook Me 3. So if you'd like to live stream, uh, game, be, be your own broadcaster, whatever it is, visit sportscaster.com today. But, you know, wait till after our stream. Uh, yes. And don't forget, the guys, this is a live stream. Let us know where you guys are representing Dodgers Nation tonight. It's, a, it's an off day, you know. There's no game today. So we're the best you got. And we're the best either way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. We're the best you got right now, guys. <laughs> so because it's, it's the hottest ticket uh, – I think in in the nation right now, Matt Matt Beatty, owner of the highest batting average on the team, <laughs> by like a lot. Um, we had a chance, like I said, I had a, had a chance to kind of chat with him over the phone, uh, along with our lovely producer, Tamara. She was there hanging out, and we had more uh, in the interview. But here's some of the highlights uh, of Matt walking us through, you know. This is first big league game, first time going to a big league stadium and making it count. So here's a, a, a bit with Mr. Matt Beatty. Uh, yeah. Well, let's flash forward in that game. What was going through your head as you were walking into the uh, the on deck circle for the first time? Well, I'll say that the first three innings, I was just trying to soak it up. You know, mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, man, I'm I'm in a big league dugout at a big league ballpark. Um, and not only that, it's Dodgers versus Giants, one of the biggest rivalries in baseball. Um, so I was just trying to soak that up, you know? Um, and then, you know, I had a good talk with JT before the game and he was just telling me about how to be prepared and be ready. Um, cause you never know when, cause an off day, when you're not in the starting lineup, it's not an off day. You're, mm. you're preparing from the third inning on for a potential double switch or a pinch hit or whatever it may be. Just injuries can happen. You know, pitcher spots come up. Uh, so after the third inning, I tried to collect my thoughts and, you know, just try to focus on baseball and not get all wrapped up around all the emotions and everything like that. So I got on deck. Uh, still, heart was still pounding a little bit. Some of the fans were actually uh, giving me some crap while I was on deck, yeah. like saying, hey, what's that in your back pocket? And uh, and it was my, my uh, sliding, sliding mitt that I put on. Um, he was like, "Hey, it's sticking out. You need to put it put it down or something like that." So I just, I think this is a moment that really helped me settle down. As I, you know, I tugged at the uh, at the sliding mitt, and you know, they just busted out laughing, and it gave me a little <laughs> bit of a smile too. So I think that kind of eased the tension. And then, you know, once once my name got announced, and and then I was walking to the plate, I think I felt pretty normal for the most part. So you walk up to the plate to face uh, notorious Dodger killer Ty Block. So tell us about that at bat. You know the first hit. You know I was I think I was sitting heater first pitch obviously, and I was just looking for something out over the plate that I could barrel. Um, and luckily, you know he he threw a slider to me that I saw pretty good, and and, and you know put a swing on it and. You know, right at contact, I knew that I barreled it up and that if it got past Ty, um, that it was going to be a hit. And once it got past him, you know, I can't really explain what it felt like. It, I mean, it, it felt 
good, obviously, but, you know, I just felt like I was floating mm-hmm. running down the line <laughs> to first base. Um, and then, you know, once I got back to first base, Georgie there, you know, pat me on the back and he was saying, hey, man, I think you're going to have a couple uh, text messages when you get back <laughs> yeah. into the clubhouse tonight. Um, and then, you know, seeing the guys over there uh, in the dugout cheering me on and, you know, they were so excited for me and, and it was a special moment. And even Brandon Belt, you know, he took the time to say, hey, that that's your first knock, huh? Congratulations. So that was, you know, all of that put together, that was, that was really cool and really special. Uh, all right, so we know oftentimes with that that first big league knock, they they tend to some of the vets they they, they like to have some fun with you and fun with the players, fun with the ball. How uh, how did you get presented that ball after the game? Uh, you know they didn't do anything to the ball or anything, but uh, it, it was sitting at my at my locker when I got back into the clubhouse, along with you know twenty twenty five ticket subs. So that nice. was pretty cool. Um, but after the game, you know, obviously uh, I wanted to go see my wife who was in attendance she was there um and i we went and you know had a special moment took a picture um you know hugged and, and it was a really cool moment but uh, doogie and, and and bueller came running out of the dugout you know yelling at me and telling me to get into the clubhouse now everybody's waiting on me so i come <laughs> go running up to the dugout and you know all the guys are there cheering for me and you know giving me high fives and it actually turned into i had to get into a uh, laundry cart with my full uniform on and all the guys gave me a big uh, ice cold beer shower and started throwing <laughs> beers on me and baby powder and all that stuff That's uh, right. you know Russell gave like a little speech to me and congratulated me and all that so it, you know it was really cool so that that was great and there's a lot more of that that fun and fantastic interview but uh, how do I get how do I get Russell Martin to, to, to give me a speech a speech for me magic Man, I, you need I, your first big league knock. <laughs> I can tell you, uh, even if I got a chance, I wouldn't get it. I mean, a couple notes about it. You know, with with, with Matt here, uh, it was two days after his twenty uh, sixth birthday. He yep. gets that call. He, he, you know, that's one of the things I, I opened up our conversation <laughs> with. Is like, I'm going to ask for you know a big league call up for my birthday because apparently it works. That's all it takes. That's all it takes, oh, dude. The one ask, gift. Just ask. You 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 heard it, Mrs. <laughs> FRG. <laughs> but uh, uh, you guys can check out that full interview on our YouTube page. I'm going to post that uh, tonight and should be up tomorrow, being Friday. Some people on the stream. So we got Lomita, California, in the house. We got hello from Oxnard. What is that? Somis Girl Fifty. Uh, we got Waxhaw. Kyle's in here. What's Waxhaw? Waxhaw, North Carolina. Yes. That's a cool, I don't know what that is. <laughs> JDT24 Boxer, congrats from West 10. Um, also, BD, BD set and back, uh, block back to Sacktown. Uh, that's a good point. He did get option back, back yeah. down. That's funny. I don't know if I it's like funny, that. but he, he hadn't been all that great. I think that was Whatever. his first start, though, or his first um, well, dude, didn't he appearance. Have like a, was it? Because I <laughs> yeah. think he, he ERA had a 108 like a ERA. Yeah. That's like what mine would be, though. We got Maria from Hawthorne, California. What's going on? Uh, what else we got? Jess is in the house. What's going on, Jess? Who's winning the World Series? Dodgers, duh. That's 100%. Let's give... Just a couple of points there. What do Perez you got? 1619 over on Twitch says, that must be an amazing feeling to get the call to the big leagues. You can really hear like mm-hmm. his genuine, you know, when he's, yeah. when you're walking through the emotions with him, like he genuinely was like, mm-hmm. I was floating. Like it was almost like, it almost sounded like a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, And I'm for, sure it was for him. It's probably a dream come true. And, Hopefully we get to see him uh, succeed for the Dodgers for a very long time and have yeah. a very long, very good career. He's a good guy. 100%. By the Hi. way, uh, Perez over there on, on Twitch, what's going on, uh, representing from Denver. 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 In the in a Rocky territory. So that was one of the things, and, and T, if you want to chime in a little bit, that was one of the things, like, you never know how interviewers, interviews are going to kind of go with, with big leaguers. It's hit or miss, especially after their first game, and it's a day off for him, so you don't know if he's coming here to L.A. trying to find a spot for him to for yeah. him to chill, but it was a it was a great interview. He was a good, like, he gave great answers, honest, full-blown answers on things, and, I mean, we had fun with it. Yeah, I think he really went into detail and he's very like vivid about everything. Everything yeah. sounded like a movie. But he was a great person. I loved him. It's it's because he's a full grown adult. He's twenty six he years a, old. He's, he's not a he's grown not, ass man. He's not a you know nineteen year old Alex Verdugo or something like no. that. <laughs> he's he's a man child. Like he's a man now. Like let's face it. Like he's yeah. been in the minor leagues for a long time. He's been like one of those Edwin Rios guys who mm-hmm. gets compared to mm-hmm. a lot because yes. they very both similar. Lefty, both hit. 
very similar Balls. situation to where they're blocked by the current cornerstones in the organization and guys that probably would be on major league rosters anywhere else mm-hmm. or at least would have spent a decent amount of time by now but now he's getting his chance he's getting his shot Pollock's going to be out for a while yeah. we'll talk about that later on in the broadcast and you know I, I hope he's, he's here to stay I really do yeah I mean the, the kid's a, 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 like I said, a very nice kid, thoughtful. And we're going to get into Cody stuff because there's a lot of Cody. And we I chatted with uh, our, our pal, Mr. Rick Kajewski, so give, give that a minute. But one of my favorite things uh, of many, there were, again, the, the, the Matt conversation was, was really cool. But uh, I loved, as I asked him about, like, what was the biggest thing, you know, coming uh, up through the minor leagues? And he started referencing, like, you know, you, you go and you watch like something like Bull Durham. You think you're right, driving around <laughs> in ratty ass buses, and yeah. no air conditioning. He's like, not with the Dodgers organization, because a lot of people may not know. He was actually drafted by the Royals in 2011 right. and smartly said, nah, fam. <laughs> but um, yeah, cool stuff. Hopefully, you know, all the best to the kid. Um, and yeah, another prime time lefty, though. Cody, what is up? Triple crown for the month. Player of the month. Everything of the month. Everything. Before we get to Cody, I got to point month. out Tam Smith won over on Periscope. From the 209, which is apparently Los Banos, California. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that was a place. <laughs> That's a place? I the, get it. All right. That's cool. That's cool. You know, welcome. Welcome to the show. Wayne. Yeah. Wayne representing from Australia. What's going on, Wayne? Appreciate you. Wayne from Down Under. Grump, grumpy was Dodger fan from East. Did I do a good accent? No. Okay. East That's Hollywood, good. y'all. Uh, Northridge in the house. We got Whittier 562. Charles, what is happening? That's, that's your territory. That is my territory. That's your hood, as it were. <laughs> and Vicky Klein, um, uh, again, one of our one of our friends of the show here, says Yelich, who? We B- got uh, BPAPS96 up uh, in a San Antonio. San Antonio's got some uh, really cool stuff. Yeah. I go to San Antonio like four there. times a year. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's where my, what happens my when you have in-laws live. In-law family. Yeah. You know. yeah. So getting on to the subject to the current like i yes. factored that in the uh-huh. current <laughs> player of the month uh for the national league let's let me start off by saying this he's good well said. also well timed on that applause <laughs> i appreciate that let's go over just briefly some of the categories he's leading the league in and this mm. is just leading and he's a lot of the things he's not leading in he's second place so yeah let's just think about that for a minute <clears throat> two of very good Christian Yelich. So. Never, I have never. I don't heard want to give her. him credit for anything because it's probably going to be an MVP race for between those two. But mm-hmm. whatever. But we're talking about leading all of baseball in batting average. I mean, if you're looking at his batting average compared to the next highest guy, which is the other, the AL Player of the Month, Mr. Anderson, which of Chicago, hell, he's hitting man. 365. Very good month for him. Cody's hitting 425. And he's, I mean, he's played every game. He's been in there. I mean, they don't take him out. He's. Yeah. I think what no, he missed the one game after getting hit in the knee. Yeah, which is the, fine. He missed half of the game where he got hit in the knee because he got hit because in he like got the hit the in game, the knee and then missed the game. But then came right back, even though we thought we. I mean, we were pretty convinced like he was an IL candidate. We were pretty convinced of that. But yeah. leading the league in batting average, leading baseball in batting average, like by a wide margin, tied with Yelich in home runs at fourteen, a ridiculous mark. Um, I mean, 14 home runs in a month is good, but 14 home runs to start the season, ridiculous. Yes. Ridiculous. Uh, Runs batted in 38. Do you know who the last 100 RBI Dodger was? I would venture to guess, and I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and say Jeff Kent. Nope. 105. When was that? That was uh, 2005. I always forget Jeff Kent was the Dodger. 2005. Jeff Jeff Kent, the uh, the cop? (laughs) He yes. was definitely a cop. Come on. <laughs> he slide in at second base. He's like, oh, bad boy. What you got? <laughs> Just breaks out. Cups was I right? Run. Did I win a prize? Uh, no, it was Adrian Gonzalez. He was. Never heard of him. He was the. I forgot the, about the, Agon. The, 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 his first full season as a Dodger, he drove him like 100 plus. But I love Agon, man. If, if you think about it, the Dodgers really the don't show. have. Uh, they haven't had that hunt, that big RBI guy on their no. team in a long time. But he's, uh, I mean, the current pace he's on is obviously not something that he can keep up. He's not going to hit 70 home runs or whatever he's on pace for. He's not going to drive in 200 RBIs or whatever he's on pace for. That's just not going to happen. But pretty cool to think about the fact that he's probably going to be our first 100 RBI guy since like 2015, mm-hmm. I think, is the last time we had that. Obviously, um, I mean, the Dodgers have been a team that doles out the RBI as best yeah. they can. Yeah, you and know, they've been very good about it. Uh-huh. Very good. But, uh, it, yeah, it's really cool to, to see just to come out this hot. And this is uh, – I think we have some of the highlights in, in uh, my chat with Rick earlier today. And if not, you also can find the full chat with uh, Rick on our YouTube, uh, which is on the Internet. 
<laughs> but it is on the internet machine. He 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 leads the league in like everything. Everything. Man. Like everything. And he's, he broke he's first records. In, yeah, he did. He's <laughs> yeah. first in runs. He's first in RBIs. He's first in slugging on base percentage. I mean, it's almost easier at this point to find something he's not first at. I mean, he's killing like OPS. He's yeah. blowing Yelich out of the water, which is yeah, a, Yelich a, is a guy you would expect to have a higher OPS just because he's, he's such a power hitter. He's now. got to what's it called? He's got to um, um, stop being so good with like hitting so many home runs because now he's not leading in like doubles. What's up with that? <laughs> like, That's unacceptable. On, freaking loser. <laughs> Uh, which is one of the things, too. Like, I don't know if we have it in, in the highlight package. But, again, it will be on YouTube. But Rick talking about, um, uh, you know, Cody hitting, like, th what was it, like 350 or something insane oh, with two strikes. Or uh, I forgot what the hell it was. But his weakest spot is the, the pitch. with two strikes. Th his weakest zone is the pitch up in the, uh, up in the zone, and he's still hitting, like, 270. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Historically, when you oh, look back right. at you like, have the Rick I notes. have the Rick notes. Thank you to Mr. Rick Krajewski for leaving these behind the for way, me. He, Rick he, uh, uses some exceptional paper. This We've is, all this is the best paper I've ever felt. I'm pretty sure this is like <laughs> Dunder Mifflin finest court document paper, <laughs> which I, we, we're, we're going to have to talk about that, Rick. But if you look at some of these like deeper stats when you do a deep dive on Bellinger, as Rick did for us because he is a friend of the show, he's hitting 510 on non fastballs this season, which if First of all, best in baseball by a wide margin. Second of all, if you remember, that was his biggest problem over the past, two, yes. you know, since he's come up, is burying back foot sliders, mm -hmm. any kind of breaking pitch, really. He, you had a better chance of getting him out on or getting him flailing on one of those weird, as you used to call it, wishy-washy wishy -washy. wings. Yeah, it was too And now part, he's and now the best he hitter has, in baseball. What is it? it? The, he, like, uh, like Dave was saying, you know, he has the multiple clubs in the bag. You know, yeah. last season, he couldn't use his lob wedge. And now it's like one of his best, uh, you know, he, he has, he's checking all the boxes. That's We're, all I'm going to say. Thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop with the golf thing because yeah. it wasn't going to work that yeah, much. Yeah, no one's using the golf thing. I think the only one is me and Gary who would have got that one. I'm going golfing on Saturday. <laughs> oh, wow. TFTI, bro. I suck at it, but I go. Anyways. My bag one thing has I did, my name on it. I'm just saying. My bag has your name on it, too. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I did notice about Bellinger this year was when you start looking at when, – when somebody has a hot streak like this, you're kind of looking at – He is very handsome. He is very handsome, yeah. But when somebody has a hot streak like this, you kind of start looking at the little details of their approach and their yes. swing and their stance and, like, the new – whatever, mm -hmm. the new rituals they do when they get to the plate, whatever. <clears throat> His inside or his back foot is turned in a yes. little bit, and his front foot is turned out a little bit, which means he is pulling on the ball mm -hmm. a lot, and that's something that could be exploited in the future. Hopefully not, but he it looks like he is have he just has a completely different approach. He's crushing the ball. I love him. Jess, uh, Jess, this is Grandma golfing too. <laughs> I miss Grandma. We haven't talked about Grandma in a while. Mm -hmm. um, Dodger lover thirty three. I've seen I've seen Dodger I lover. Killing it in the stream here, uh, asking when Cody's coming around. We are going to talk about Cody in just a little while. Uh, I'm surprised we don't have Adrian Gonzalez here in the stream. Oh, from where's YouTube. Gonzo? Where are you at? Come on, Gonzo. Um, but one last one before we do get to our, our my conversation with Rick earlier today, and that was Dodger Lover calling it out <laughs> for for uh, Mr. Cody Bellinger. 45 home runs, 115 RBI, 25 stolen bases, 300 plus batting average. So while we while we play this this uh, this video from earlier today, you guys give us what you think Cody's line is going to be, and the best one um, wins nothing. I kind of saw that if he made adjustments in the offseason and had a full you know, few months to kind of work out some of the things that, that he was struggling with, mm -hmm. that he could put up good numbers. Did I think he was going to hit 425 in the first month of the year? No. no. But uh, you know, I'm not surprised that he's, that he's playing as well as he has been. It's just that he's literally doing everything on the field. So yeah. it's, been, it's been really fun to watch. It's Robin home runs. He's hit, what, I think he got – it was 47 hits in – was that – that was March, April, or was that just April? March and April. Okay. Um, most RBIs before May 1st of all time, <clears throat> tied for the most home runs in the same conversation as Pujols, A-Rod, and Yelich. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always good. Um, like you said, he's leading in every category. Some of the splits stuff, I mean, he has the highest average. He's hitting 479 against righties. Wow. It's outrageous, which wow. is fine. They but, say that's good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. But then you look at his lefties numbers, and that's an area where he really struggled last year, and he's hitting 333. So his average is up about 112 points year over yeah. year in, against, in, against left-handed pitching. So some of the holes, I guess, in his game, he's really patched up in the past offseason. You see it where he was close in 2018, but he was still getting beat on that curveball. And, and now, I mean, I mean, do you, if you have a number on, on that inside curveball, I know you're the master of having all the numbers, but if I not, do. I can say that it's good. So it's not <laughs> curveball specific, but on non-fastballs this year, he's hitting 510. Oh, wow. 
um, on Holy pitches God. down in the zone. He's hitting, or sorry, just low pitches in general. So not even in the zone. He's hitting 489. So he took a, a hole in his swing where, where guys are trying to bury the ball down on him, either get him to pop it up or roll over on it. And he literally turned it into a strength. He's hitting 357 with two strikes this season. Holy best shit. in Major League Baseball. So you think of a guy who's now leading, leading Major League Baseball in home runs. Yes. You think power swing, swing yeah. for the fences, probably strikes out a lot. No, exact opposite. He has more walks than strikeouts. He has a 356 average and over a 400 on base percentage with two strikes. You mentioned the defense earlier. Mm-hmm. Let's see, I have some written down. Eight defensive run saves is third most among major league outfielders behind Trout and Lorenzo Cain, who are pretty good. Yes. Um, his UZR is a 3.7. It's the second best among outfielders. Um, and he has four outfield assists, which is tied for the most in the National League. So a guy who is doing it offensively, but also doing it defensively as well. So you <clears> have a well-rounded player, which we always knew he was very good defensively, mm-hmm. but... For a guy who played the majority at first base two years ago, started yeah. to play a little bit more outfield last year, and now has turned himself into one of the best outfielders in, in the league is pretty impressive. So he's good. I mean, yes. that's what that's kind R- of the Rick is good, of course, but <laughs> yeah. also Cody is very Rick, good. Rick is very good, and he's very good at his job and very good at finding very good paper, obviously. <laughs> um, but well, I mean, mean, what what do you what do you think? You like, just look at the numbers, you know. Look at the numbers that Cody has put up. You already said them, but it's just different to see the numbers while you're, you know, you kind of discuss more with your point here. But you know, the dude's doing everything, and it's and it's delicious. Yeah, I mean, when you look at <laughs> this wonderful stat provided by uh, Stats LLC, not a sponsor, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Uh, Bellinger owns one of the highest averages in Major League history among those who have hit 10 or more homers through his team's first 31 games. Mm -hmm. And the list is quite a list, and it's full of Hall of Famers. Number one, Mr. Hank Aaron himself with 11 home runs and a 477 batting average for for the first 31 games, as Mm -hmm. we said. Jimmy Fox, 13 home runs, 452. Ryan Zimmerman. Not a Hall of Famer, but he's Ryan Zimmerman, very good hitter in his prime. In his prime. In his prime. Uh, 13 home runs with 435. Cody Bellinger, 14 home runs, 434. And Chipper Jones, 10 home runs, 426. That's some elite, elite Those are some company. of the best names to ever play the oh, game, yeah. plus Ryan Zimmerman. Plus Ryan Zimmerman. <laughs> plus, a hot, plus a good season. Yeah, That's plus a good season. Um, you know, one of the things that I chatted with Rick about, too, is like when it's way too much, and I felt like an ass even bringing it up, but like when do you start to <laughs> – you can't really mutter – Trout and Bellinger in the same breath yet? No, no, no. no, no. But you know, you not kind a, of sort of one good season. One month, no, one good month. One good month. One yeah. except one Hall of Fame month. Um, yeah, and, I mean, we had the question pop up earlier in the stream: is is it a possibility that Cody Bellinger could take home the Triple Crown this year? And yeah, I mean, the Triple Crown has kind of lost its value and meaning a little bit over the past couple of years because the game has changed dramatically. The last yeah. Triple Crown winner for offense was. Uh, Miggy. Miggy, yeah. Miggy. Yeah, he did it in like 2011, and that, somewhere around that range. And that when he was a good, beast. When he was just a monster. And, you know, you don't pair batting average with power anymore. And no. this game is so much all or nothing now that you either have a really big-time home run hitter or you have a guy who hits for batting average. You don't really get a combination of the two often. Mm-hmm. So when you do, you cherish it and you hold on to it, as uh, Billy Madison said. So we're going to get I'm seeing some people asking about uh, about uh, Pollock and I still see Corey. We're also going to talk a bit about CT3 coming up. But uh, just to get some of those numbers from, uh, you know, people calling their shot on Cody's season. So Tom over on Facebook calling 303, 41 dingers and 111 RBI. 303, he would have to go through a pretty down spurt to think, end up at only 303. I think uh, one of one of our guys, Mr. <coughs> Daniel Preciado, he, mm-hmm. uh, he he basically broke down the stats. We should I should find the tweet. I'll, yeah. At one point, I'll find it during this or after, and then I'll tweet it with everybody because that was a very good tweet of basically how bad of a slump that he would have to yeah. go through to not hit 300, and it's pretty freaking bad. Like, it would be his worst slump, slump of his – like, probably one of the worst stretches of his career, mm-hmm. even though he's young. But, I mean, these numbers are pretty – reasonable you guys aren't throwing out anything in here that i've seen that's not reasonable this you know this guy says 44 home runs i don't think he's i think he's probably going to sit below 40 home runs even Mm -hmm. though he's got this ridiculous start Um, i don't think he's going to be that janae says 49 home runs 120 ribs uh 22 stolen base we can't we can't you know forget to point out that he's he's stealing bases he could be an elite clip uh, he's he's in the conversation to be a 30 30 guy this year which is nuts to think about mm-hmm. i mean he, how many he has five stolen bases already or six or something like that uh, i think and so we're 30 games in i mean it's 
possible. You should and check probably your will sheet. Be. You should he check probably your will be sheet. a 30 home run guy. Nah, he gets the, he's he got gets too the many fun stats one. on here, man. Yeah, he gets the fun deep dive ones. Oh, yeah. Not the he has five stolen bases, like the very clear cut <laughs> yeah. baseball reference. He goes by only triple slash line. Yeah, he's, he's too good for us. Jess is saying 50 dingers and 117 ribbies. Adrian Gonzalez, there you are. I saw that you, you had popped in. So thanks for hanging out, Agon. Over there on YouTube says BD, going back a little bit, BD will be the next Muncie calling it. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. He's but a nice, they're just, they're he's just a nice different, kid. different kinds of players um, in the sense that <clears throat> BD is a pretty highly touted prospect, or at one point was a very highly touted prospect, but he's mm -hmm. still pretty high up there in the Dodgers system. Uh, Max Muncy was not that. No. He was not that. Absolutely <laughs> not. By the way, I found the tweet Daniel had pointed out. He Cody would need to bat 270 for the rest of the season uh, to end up at, what, 300. Um, and there's other numbers that are less important to some folks. I mean, yeah, 270 is like a, at this point, it's is like a reasonable. cakewalk for him to bat that. So I can't imagine him hitting below 300 this year. <laughs> Todd's going wild over here. Barry Bonds, who? Belly, 69 home runs, 124 RBI. I'll take it. You know what? All right, whatever, dude. Why not? Why not sure. just over 9,000? Like, let's just let's go ham here. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the fact that Bonds' uh, <laughs> first month of the season did not go as well as mm -hmm. uh, Belly's did in terms of his record-breaking year, then yeah, sure, why not? Last clip. He was also a monster. We didn't, <laughs> I don't think we uh, – no, we did touch on, on those for sure. But um, I'm saying, honestly, Cody's on pace for like 8,000 home runs. <laughs> that's In that's life it. or this year? Yes. All of it. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, you talk about some of the franchise records and Major League Baseball records that he's broken this year, which mm -hmm. we're going to get into now because there's just so much Bellinger talk. We don't want to take up the whole broadcast with Cody Bellinger. I'm sure you guys wouldn't he's mind that. He's a player that. of the month. I'm sure you guys wouldn't mind that. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, hits. 47 hits. Broke Raphael for calls, 2008 record of 43, and you forget how good Rafi was at one point. Rafi was good in his heyday, yeah. man. When, when Rafi was on fire, he was a great baseball player. Dingers. With the dingers, he killed Matt Camp's 2012 record. When, when he only had 12. When Matt Camp only. was good. Yeah, yeah. Back, back in back the good when, old days. Uh, we miss you, Matty. Uh, broke a, a long-standing franchise record of Ron Say, 1977, 37 ribbies in his first 31 games. Of course, we talked a little bit already about the 97 total bases, yep. which broke Papa uh, Papa Chase's <laughs> old record, uh, what, like 11-year-old record yep. of 85, which how the hell do you even have 85? What up with that, Chase? What were you on? <laughs> Dude, I, he was I, I think life. people forget that Chase Utley was like a monster. And, like an MVP pretty a much. A monster of a player when yeah, he was Him young. and J-Roll But back then he in like the ended up being like 40. So. And then Matt Stairs. Yeah. Oh, God, Matt Kowski Stairs. made the show. What is up, Kowski? Friend of the show. We can start now. <laughs> the show starts now. All right. So we know the numbers. We, we've seen all that. We love Cody. Keep it up, kid. But... Please. Not everything. Not everything is dandy in Dodger land, and, and we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing people wanting to get into the bad. We want to complain. We're Dodger fans. We love to complain. <laughs> A.J. Pollock hit the former disabled list, and apparently they're taking out the hardware in his elbow, which sounds like fun. I'm not going to lie, but I'm lying. He's a robot. He's a robot? Robot. All right, the robot. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Zoidberg. Who calls hard hardware? Like, you could have just said, like, the plate <laughs> or the screws or... They were like, yeah, they, he's got some hardware in his yeah, elbow. They, but the real question is, was it Lowe's or was it Home Depot? You let us know. That's true, because below. those are very different places. I think he was... Uh, um, what's the one that just shut down? That one. He went it to Harbor Freight. <laughs> That's why they needed to take it out. So yes. cheap. They had to get it out. <laughs> You guys know. But, of course, uh, that meant an open spot for our friend Matt Beatty. But how do you, like, really, like, how does it, what was it? It was an infected bursa sack. And, I, again, hashtag not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Mm -hmm. Like, all of that just, no. I'm, I'm out. I'm out on all that. No elbow talk. No Ugh. grody talk. No infection. Like, like. Uh. I like how Dave just, like, casual. It was very casual about it. Like, yeah, his elbow swelled up a lot and it hurt. And it's like, what? Like, it swelled up from the inside? Like, from screws and stuff? Mm -hmm. That's disgusting. Yeah. Like, very disgusting. And they're like, yeah, they're just going to open up his arm. And, you know, if there's something wrong with it, they'll take out the hardware that's in there. And everyone's just like, what happened? <laughs> like, when did this happen? <laughs> but yeah, I will say, if there is a time for it to happen, it's right now. Because we have very good players sitting on the bench mm -hmm. and getting at-bats taken away from them in Alex Verdugo and Mr. Beatty now. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. But uh, AJ Pollock... Not exactly. He wasn't tearing the, the cover off the ball. So, well, 
it, you never want that. You never want to wish an injury on anybody, and I don't think anybody did. But you yeah. know, it's just, it's sort of something of like statistically, it's a blessing, but it's super unfortunate because AJ's a nice guy. You were there at the interview or at the He's introduction. Great dude. A great you, dude. You had a chance to chat with him and all that. Yeah. yeah. Nice guy, friend of the show. You yeah. know. He came out of the tunnel at uh, uh, Fan <laughs> Fest, and I was just standing there. Um, yeah, not paying attention that. and there yeah. was nobody else around and I just turned and looked up at him and he was smiling at me and I was like hi and he went hi and I was like what <laughs> the heck like because I didn't know much about him until he showed up other than he was a diamondback so we hated him um, so when he got here I was very pleasantly surprised at how nice of a guy he was one other bad part about him hitting the Injured IL um, there's a guy on this team that we would not like to see on the field as much as he has been and now he will be getting much more time. Yes. And there is a particular group of people on Twitter that would not like me to speak You're ill gonna get of their uh, beautiful Chris Taylor. But I will speak ill. Wait, where's my knockoff one? I have. I know I have it. I just can't find it. Go ahead, continue. No, I wanna, I'm going to find wanna it. Hear the noise. I'm going to find it. Is, it. is it? Oh, that's right. Knockoff. They couldn't afford it on this Pretty particular long. app. Uh, Chris Taylor is uh, basically stepping up to the plate with um, whatever they use in cricket to hit the ball. <laughs> He's no, using I think one of that's those. better. Oh, yeah, it's a bigger surface. He's using like a pool stick. He's using like if his bat were a wiffle ball, like it has the holes in it, mm. like an actual wiffle ball. Not uh, a wiffle uh, ball uh, bat. It's like a wiffle, a wiffle ball. Bat. It's just he just, I mean, bat. the guy can't touch anything, man, and it's really frustrating. Apparently, he only hits with bases loaded is what I saw on Twitter. Um it's just it's bad to see right now. It's good that he's still getting the chances early on in the season so that he can figure it out, hopefully, for hopefully. the end of the season. Hopefully. But at what point, <clears throat> at what point do you stop giving this man crucial at-bats? Because I think the biggest problem that I've had so, par- so far is not the fact that he's getting a lot of at-bats. Mm-hmm. It's that he's taking them away from Alex Verdugo. Yes. Specifically, in the first loss to San Francisco was the most frustrating part to me. Yeah. That you're down, what, down one run? Also, why the hell do you lose two to San Francisco? Oh, that's right. They're the Dodgers. Anyway. San Francisco, yeah. They just they come out to play the Dodgers, and mm. then they go back in their holes. But, <laughs> it, I mean, you get in a situation where Alex Verdugo, I'm pretty sure they were down one run in that game, could potentially tie up the game. Yep. And you put Chris Taylor in to hit for him. And I get He's come up with some big hits uh-huh. in the past. He really has. Like, playoffs, you know, important mm-hmm. games, division-deciding games, all these things. But how are you going to put him in? <laughs> When he's striking out like every other at bat at this point versus Verdugo, who is a very good hitter and has a very good approach to the plate. I get it. He's young. He doesn't have the experience, you know, yada, yada, yada. I just don't like the move. Then that I think that was uh, one of the moves this week that kind of played into our poll results, which I'll talk about in a minute. But. Yeah, especially knowing that Pollock wasn't available in that game. You d- and, and OK. What was it? A couple of weeks ago, you were talking about. Obviously, they've changed by now. But but Doogie splits. He was hitting lefties better. Yeah. This season in his career, he's very very. I put the numbers together in a tweet a while back. I don't have them in front of me, but like in his minor league career, you know, he's he's at or over or around three hundred against a, lefties. He's a good left-handed hitter. He is a ball player, and he right. knows what he's doing. Plus, he's a fun kid. Now you know Pollock is is not going to be available to pinch hit for somebody. Where if you're trying to get that runner, you're trying to get the lead, you're trying to get the win, whatever the hell you're trying to do, which normally. Back in my day, you tried to win baseball games. Oh. I don't know. I don't know this day. Never heard of that. I don't know if it goes against analytics to win the game, but like no, no we're gonna we're gonna lose this one. You, you know, it, it, it's in our favor. Numbers, to lose this one. advanced stats, basic ass stats of going, like Peterson cannot hit against lefties, and you knew the game would have to go through Jock. He did get a hit against the lefty though. Yeah, earlier in the one. game, he, got one. he he has two hits a season. And I think Rick told me earlier it's like two of the last four lefties he faced. Yeah, he's yeah. Got it's hit. just recently he's gotten some wood on the ball. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not. And it's uh, a very a it very wishy washy <laughs> swing. Hey, don't you don't you dare! I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm, I'm I am a scout. You are not a scout. Kowski says, uh, but uh, CT3, love him, but he needs to sit a bit for sure. Um, I feel that in my soul. <laughs> Jess says he needs him to make an infinity gauntlet with six stones. Yes, sure. I would say more infinity batting gloves. Kowski also said go bro do go. Like so we we did I, I chatted with with our friend Rick a bit about CT3 and I and I had I begged him to help help us feel better, help Dodgers Nation feel better. Take it away me and Rick. CT3 has been struggling now for pretty much all the last year and whatever 33 games we've played this season. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit tougher. Um, the thing with CT3 is it seems like his swing's a little long. He's still swinging and missing far too much. 
Um, he has shown pretty good plate coverage. Mm -hmm. He's not taking too many. Uh, last year, he took far too many called third strikes. Oh, yes. This is a situation where, and it's it's a good and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing that he's swinging at good pitches. It's a bad thing in that he's missing good pitches. He's missing a lot of pitches over the middle of the plate. Um, but, you know, at least last year, like I said, he took far too many called third strikes. Didn't really seem like he was comfortable at the plate, whereas he seems comfortable. Now it's just a matter of, okay, how do we make more contact with those? So, um, I don't know. I'm looking for – for CT3 to, to put the ball and play more. We saw a couple infield singles he's had of late. Maybe that can mm -hmm. get him going. Um, he's at his best when he's driving the ball when he's using the opposite field. Yeah. And he hasn't quite done that yet this year. So once you start seeing those line drives towards right center, that's when you know, okay, he's kind of figuring things out. So I begged, I begged him, I begged Rick, hey, help, give me some stats, give me some numbers to help everybody feel better about him. And he, I don't know if he, did he help? I mean, I, I gave him a, a tall task. I even gave him the opportunity to bail out. Uh, Orchard Supply Hardware. That's the <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the one that's not home. In your face, sucker! In case you guys were right. wondering. By the way, I saw somebody a... in the comment remind me. Thank you, I appreciate it. He said Osh, which is not what I was thinking about, but it reminded me. That what, is, what were you going on? That is Osh Orchard Supply Hardware. Oh, I thought Osh it's, was a different one. It's like they're the same. Oh. You killed. Oh, Gary. I'm thinking of. I'm <laughs> thinking. I'm thinking of the clothing store Oshkosh. <laughs> That's a store, right? Hooked on phonics over here. Come on, guys. I don't know for stuff. Just, for just 25 cents a day, you can help this poor little baby Brooke. I need to learn. I, you do, haven't I, have, a, I have a degree, if you guys were wondering. It's not important, it's but I have one. It's 98 degrees. I never picked it up from, from the school. <laughs> I, owe, I owe them money That's, for a book. Uh, that is at BrookeV3 on Twitter and Instagram. I was going to say, maybe back. you should have some more uh, brewski out of that fine, <laughs> fine vintage brand koozie. Thank you to our friends at Vintage Brand because I haven't you know, I haven't talked enough about them on the show. We did have a, a winner last week from our Crooked Canvas, a really cool story. We'll probably share it sometime on social this week. But uh, the winner, it, it's she wanted it for her son, and her son's like super obviously loves the Dodgers because he's smart. But he's run each of he's only like seven, yeah. but he's run yeah. each of the last uh, Justin Turner five Ks, uh, like each of the last two of them or something like that. And they sent us a, a picture of it today, a video today. It, it's this little kid with this big, <laughs> big old canvas. He's, he was very excited. Very about cool. It, it was very cool. So uh, to see. You guys, and you guys can also be that person. Yeah, if, go get know, some go to Vintage Brand. VintageBrand.com, some of that super, super sweet s uh, swag. Plus, it keeps your beverage warm. Or a crooked can. I mean, whatever you need. Cold. Or warm, if that. Did you say sweet? No, uh, it keeps your beverage warm is what I said. It keeps your hand cold. warm and your beverage cold. Yes. Vintage Brand. So. Look at that ad. <sighs> Anyways, Chris I know Taylor's you, uh, not let's, good. Let's, let's split in the middle here. Let's split in the middle. Yeah. T, I know you got some uh, some questions. Um Give me some questions. Uh, yes, we have questions from dedicated viewers or listeners, I guess. Okay, so listeners, listeners, they're viewers. The listeners, the listeners, for sure. Okay, so <laughs> killed it. <laughs> William Thank Forbes you. said, "What is Dodgers' love affair with Chris Taylor? Please help." Um. Uh, oh wait, let me let me do my best. Uh, my best. I, I Doc is one of those guys. I can't really do the voice, but I know he's gonna say. He's like, you know, uh, CTs. He's got some big hits for us in the past, and, and you know we, f we feel he's earned it. Uh, he's close. He's getting there. We feel he's, his approach is there. He's taking good swings. Uh, it's just, you know, the hits aren't falling right now. Well, the hits uh, have <laughs> got to fall. You know, he's going to get his chances, and you know, well, we are the, both terrible. The hits aren't falling in, but he's going to get his hacks in. He's, he's going to see at bats every day, and he's going to start seeing those pitches, and you know, he's going to stay in there. All right. You know, I don't I'm, know what his love affair is. You know, guys. I'm pretty that's, that's, okay ish at sounds and voices yeah. and what Dave's those a tough are both one, terrible. Dave's those a are tough both one. terrible, right? He's because he's like a he's like such a <laughs> flat. Yeah. Yeah, those are bad. Those they're, are bad. Thank you. Make me do a different voice. They're semi good. I would love to see semi -good. you guys. Semi good. That's just you being nice. I know. You guys could do Christopher Walken. No, no everybody does a walk in. You said everybody does a walk in. He's not getting his hits. You should do it. You should do it. He's garbage. You should do a Rick Krajewski accent or um, voice. I think, I think I just am a Rick Krajewski voice. Like, this is how I sound. We're all Rick in here. In our hearts and souls. <laughs> Where's Rick at? <laughs> He's coming up on, a, on another clip right now because I asked Rick about Corey Seager. But in a minute, we'll get there. But, yeah, I don't really know what it is. It's just, it's going to be that thing with, with uh, Taylor and Dave Roberts. It's always going to be – or the Dodgers. We'll, we'll lump them all together. Uh, it's, it's always going to be that sort of thing where he's done it in the past. He's been that guy who's gotten the big hits, like you already said, and he's earned some leeway. But 
when you're coming off of leading the world in strikeouts and you're hitting, what is he, CT 163 right now or something, whatever it is, it's, it's, it begins to be a li little bit debilitating um, to the fan base because it's like, we want to win. Why don't you go spend money? Why don't you go get Bryce Harper? Well, you know, Philly just booed the hell out of Bryce Harper. So, uh, buyer beware. <laughs> this guy said, when did Dave Roberts turn into Steve Urkel? <laughs> That was not my Steve Urkel impersonation. Kid. Bad timing. It's really bad. You're, you're lucky that Jaleel I love Julio will be booze. disappointed. <laughs> we love Julio White. He's a friend of the show. Met him a couple he likes of times. tamales a lot. He loves his tamales. Goodness gracious. From our friends over tamales. there at Magali. Uh, you want to do another one? I know you got more. <laughs> yeah, I do have more. Thanks. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. She read that part. Yes, I do have more. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Back to you. Okay. Uh, so, Dude Dodger said, should we be concerned by Bueller? So this was something I had asked you, uh, all right? When we were putting together our show notes for this, I texted you about this, this is what, a day or two ago, and it's like, Bueller's on my list. During, he, his, during his start, yeah, you texted me. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, he's not – somebody who – and again, we don't have the numbers. I probably should ask Rick about this one. His fastball the, usage? The fastball usage is just Way insane. Up. Way up. And he got so many strikeouts on the, on the breaking stuff last year, but you can also get strikeouts when you set up a fastball using your breaking pitches, but they're just not there. And when he is throwing them, they're hanging. I mean, here's the, 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 I still can't get over the Urkel thing. It's, <laughs> I just feel so disappointed in myself, guys. By the way, by the way, we got to point out our producer still uh, has his brain blown by Osh and Orchard Supply Hardware being two different entities. Today I found out those were the same thing. And I was like, we're like, very proud I of I was you. like, they both shut down. They both went out of business at the same time. Now it makes sense. So um, those, those things are one and the same. Uh, we talked about the fact that his fastball looks good. I mean, he, he's still kind of all over the place with it. He doesn't seem to be hitting it as consistently as he was last year. Uh, but the fastball is not as effective when your breaking pitches aren't being executed. No. And he's leaving a lot of those breaking pitches in the zone, which is something he didn't do last year. He, he started them in the zone, and they buried their way out. <clears throat> and that's why he got um, he had so much success. And this year, he's leaving them up. There was a, a slight, we'll call it, a flash of progress in San mm -hmm. Francisco. Um, when they got that huge lead, you could tell he had the confidence to just throw a lot of breaking pitches, and he yeah. did. And that's why he got those runs tacked on at the end. He decided that he needed to get in live game situations and throw them, and he hung a couple, obviously, yeah. and it didn't go well. But there was a few where I think one was against Brandon Belt, and it was dirty. I mean, it was last year and then some. And so if you're, you know, I'm not worried about him because he's just such an, a good pitcher. He's just yeah. such a good baseball player talent. that he's going to find it eventually. And if he's going to struggle, please struggle now. Yeah, it's something of a sophomore slump. Like, you look yeah. at it. One of my, my biggest under or overlying notes for this week is you had a team that, that was the first team in baseball to win 20 games. They hit 52 home runs in April. And they're still, like, nowhere near playing their, base, their best baseball. No, it's an and impressive that's, thing. that's the thing that you think about is like this team is playing. At, mm -hmm. If you had to put a percentage of their potential, what would you right now? What would you say is their percentage of potential that they're playing with? Oh, they're 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 playing at like 75 percent of their, their potential. Look, at, you know, like even even, you know, well, I'd bring it down to maybe like 73 if we 73 percent if we include uh, Dave Roberts decisions, because I'm going to say it straight up. Baez was in that wrong spot. You're putting him up against Posey. Yeah. That's Posey. Rough. That's rough, man. Baez, two out, two on, game on the line. One guy comes in, game over, and that's, I, I knew that's it. Robert's trying to ride the hot hand on that one. Uh -huh. I get the move, but it's also oh, not let, not the move at all. He's him. not he's not made for those. Let Ryu keep going. Well, we're not going to talk about that. Let Rich Hill go. <laughs> keep going uh, last year. Anyways, we're going to get off of that because I can go on that for a while. Is this team I see Jess better? with the Joe, Joe Kelly for Cy Young. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Joe Kelly that's for fine. Cy Young. It, I, I, do I you it. feel this team is – do you feel this team's better than the 2017 team no. based off of what you've seen so far? No. Or could I, they be? Could they be? Yes, because they're, if they're there's 75% potential. Yeah, there there are better arms available. There are mm -hmm. some some of the rookies that didn't get a shot in 17 are now in in, you know, the the lineup in the rotation. You got Bueller, you got Verdugo. You have uh, you know, you're supposed to have Joe Kelly who <laughs> was the biggest second biggest up uh, you know off sign or off season signing and you have a better Cody Bellinger for a full season yes well I mean it's better right now <clears throat> um hi, hi casting his trash good to see you in the stream buddy oh, um, buddy. I, I where was it I saw it uh okay strange a lot of numbers 
asks, is he tipping his pitches in you know, regards to, to Bueller? And that was the biggest thing I had. He's either tipping his breaking pitches, which is a very strong likelihood that he's tipping his breaking pitches, yep. or they're just – He's not tunneling them. He's they're popping out of his hand instead of that, that right. good clean grip, and that's where somebody else. I, right. I lost it on the stream, but um, uh, Grumpy Dodger fan slow, slow playing him in spring training was a bad call. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you had the same experience with Kenley last year. Yes. Remember how hard? I mean, Kenley doesn't well, look that, that great Kenley as it is. Yeah, uh, that's that's a whole other subject in itself. But remember how awful he looked over the first like three, maybe month, maybe mm-hmm. first month of the year. He was. I mean, he came into the games, and I was like, well, we lost. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's garbage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work like that, guys. It doesn't work out well when you don't get to ramp up a little bit, and it's kind of showing with Walker. I don't think I don't think it's necessarily him tipping his pitches. I think it's more of what you're saying or where he's – He's, they're popping out of his exactly, hands. He's not tunneling. Exactly. He's le- and that's <clears throat> leading to him leaving him up or in the zone, and that's not going to work. I mean, th- there's probably four O2 counts during the San Francisco game, which he's been, which he was probably one of his better starts. It's like there was four O2 counts where mm-hmm. it looked like he was supposed to bury something, and he just left it. Yeah, he left, left it, it. Not even, not even <laughs> on the corner up. Yeah, he left when they're it sitting in the middle, heart, middle. Yeah, it's like, that well, doesn't work. That's not going to go over well, man. By the way, uh, Daniel's in the stream. Daniel Preci- Preciado, one of our, our fine writers over here, and we're going to see probably a lot more of him coming up because he's going to be coming back over here too. Another Ooh. wittier boy, Danny, um, says 2017, 2019, 2018. That is the way he rates the teams. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against that. Not no, against that I think all. that's a fair ranking. I think if <clears throat> this team plays with uh, all of their potential that we're seeing, mm-hmm. I think they could be a better team. I don't, I mean, that, I, you kind of just forget how special that 2017 it team was. was. It was ridiculous, especially considering you didn't really – there were a lot of things happening. Number one, that was Kershaw's like really first year of like, oh crap, not having his stuff. Oh crap, yeah, He's, having to learn to be a pitcher. He might become a human, and uh, <laughs> that was rough. That was rough in of itself. That was the year you saw Gonzalez, Adrian just, I mean, die like non-existent bat. Really, like he, I can't even compare him to anybody on the team now because he was worse. He was yeah. horrible. Uh, that was so you didn't expect good from that. You knew Bellinger was coming. Everybody knew Bellinger was coming, but they weren't sure how it would translate. Hit very well, dominated, I mean, crushed home runs left and right. But you didn't – that wasn't a team going into the season, and it's hard to look back and remember, but that wasn't a team where I was like, this team could win 100 games. Yeah. Not at all. I yeah. was like, this is a team that might take second place. Hopefully they'll take a – Yeah, that spot. was – like I had mentioned last week where I asked uh, Mark – uh, by the way, huge shout out to Mark Landry. That was a, mm-hmm. a fantastic time. We ended up skipping about half of our show just because we were enjoying the conversation so much. But uh, That's great. we got more stuff in the works with Mark. Uh, we're going to have some fun with him for sure. Um, and he enjoyed, by the way, his lovely shirt, which is like his lovely shirt he's wearing. And then mine here. You get those bad boys. And you could be legendary. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm going to give you that one. Seems about right. DodgersNation.com yeah. slash shop. Oh, wait, store, store, slash store. store. I know. I should read it. It's, behind, it's right, right it's below me. There. It's right there. Special promo code for all of our Blue Heaven Live fans here. You beautiful, beautiful people of the Instagram. Uh, BH Live 20 gets 20% off of stuff. Nice stuff like that shirt. Because really, come on, guys. Enough about 88. Time is now. Time. I wasn't there for 88. Seven, 17. So. It's about 17. All right. We've seen a lot of it. We see uh, an abundance of it. Corey, when do we stop being able to say that, like, Corey and JT will get there? Let's, let's start on JT first. JT's May. I mean, we, people keep talking about May. <laughs> and not because it's Justin Timberlake. It's, it's going to be May. It's going to be May. It's going to be May. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, give you, that, was, that was a much better impression than your doc. Right, than my Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> your Urkel. Uh, people keep talking about the majority. I mean, he doesn't really heat up till May. And last year he didn't because – he wasn't playing, if you remember that. Uh, I don't know. A home run in, in San Francisco. He's starting to look like he's finding it a little bit. Somebody pointed out to me that he has changed his stance at the plate a little bit slightly. Little bit. Um, it seems to, like he to needs me, to pull c- off a little bit. A little bit, a little doesn't bit. he? Like yeah. It's just almost too much what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would agree, for sure. Um, he, 
I, it has to be the fact that he stands so close to the plate. He's got to be one of the worst called strike zones on him in Major League Baseball. I'm, I'm convinced of it. I think Courtney with a K would agree with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she That's Justin Turner's wife. For you that don't know, she is a very big Justin Turner stand, Mrs. as it should JD. be. Yeah, as the it very should biggest. be. She's um, great. She's very vocal about strike zones against Justin Turner, and I would have to agree with her on the majority of them. Mm-hmm. He gets some tough calls on him, man. To be fair, when you're umpiring with that little tunnel, between where he's standing and the catcher, it's kind of tough to make those calls because you know you're used I, to guys standing a couple more inches off the plate. I think that's a load of BS because you saw that one where Russell Martin had to reach across. It was right down the middle of oh the plate gosh. out of that Kenley's was, that hand. That was a rough one, man. You know, when, when Kenley did one. that thing he does where he misses, misses his spot by like 19 inches, but that it's was a strike, strike yeah. and it was the end of the game, and he ended up having to throw like another yeah. 12 pitches out of it. But, yeah, I, I do have a good feeling that JT is getting close. This is going to be my doc talk again. He's getting close. He, he's you, almost there. But you, you've seen it really in. That was better. And he he started to really start to square up the ball a lot. Yeah. Ish, but he's, he, he's doing the Adam balls right now. Yeah, he's you know, the right they, at him. They talked about his his success comes in power when he's really putting the backspin on that ball, and he's been top spinning a lot of stuff <laughs> lately, and which you know, either means he's not seeing the ball well, or he just changed his approach a little bit. His launch angle is probably a little bit adjusted, but. He does seem to be seeing it better uh, yeah. over the course of the past couple games. I'm sure he's coming around. Um, I mean, this is a guy where if he doesn't start hitting in May, that's when you start looking at, okay, well, now I'm worried. Broken? Yeah. Now I'm worried that there's something wrong. Because age is coming. Father time is harsh and uh, just around the corner for JT, a guy who already has some pretty bad knees, a bad wrist. Mm-hmm. Uh, his defense at the third has taken a dive over the past two years big time. Um he, he was yeah, a lot better when he first came to L.A. in terms of defense, but his bat's gotten better, too. So I, I'm I'm OK. I, I'll, I'll still I would uh, I would keep JT in my my mm-hmm. fantasy lineup if I was a fantasy player, which I don't because, you know, life is fantasy enough. But Corey <laughs> Seager. <laughs> Thank you. Life is fantasy. Yeah. 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 By so. the way, I took uh, I took JT. 103 at bats before home run number one, which is kind of surprising. But Corey Seager. um. I don't know where I'm at on Corey right now. I've been I've been a Corey defender. There's a lot going on. One of the things I, I chatted with uh, Rick about earlier, and we'll we'll get that that clip coming soon. But you know, obviously, two major operations, the elbow, but yep. maybe not enough uh, attention is given to that hip. That that's a lot potentially ish, maybe sorta. Uh, are you surprised at how much they've played him early on? Because Hell we yes. talked he's about he's played every game. We talked about just when he first started getting into spring action, we mm-hmm. were like, it's fine if he doesn't start the season yes. on the roster. We're okay with you know ten days on the IL and then showing up and playing every other day or two days and one off, two days mm-hmm. one off. I'm still all for that because it, <clears throat> two major surgeries, not two minor surgeries, not. Two surgeries a couple of years ago. Not two one. general surgeries. Yeah, not, exactly. not uh, private surgery. Private surgery is a different thing. That's <laughs> we don't talk about those. <laughs> hey oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but he's a guy that you kind of expected them things. to slow play him a little bit more. And another one of they those guys to. was AJ Pollock that they were supposed to yes. be slow playing a little bit. And now we know where he is. I mean, we don't know where he is right now. I'm sure he's somewhere in L.A. He lives LA. in Arizona, so he might be in Arizona right no, now. No, they, they were going to do the operation in L.A. I think they did the operation already, didn't they? Yeah, today in L.A. So I maybe think. he went home. <laughs> you don't know him. <laughs> Driving with his arm in a cast or something. <laughs> <Like Alfred>. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out the window. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, Pollock was a guy that you expected to see a lot more rest because of his injury history. Mm-hmm. He did not get that. He played the majority of the games. He didn't sit very many games at all for 30-something games. Seeger is another one of those guys. They've yeah. given him his rest days. They've made sure he's gotten a rest day after their days off, too, which has become a reoccurring theme. So yeah. he gets back-to-back days off. Uh-huh. It, it just seems strange to me that they're using him as much as they are, even though he continues to – we don't want to call it struggling, but he's not Seegerish. How about that? No, he's, he's not, not there yet. He, he had that point where he heated up a bit. And then he just fell off a plate. So let's, um, I think it's about time to let's, let's Rick, uh, Rick in some uh, mixed conversation. He's 267, 268, something like that against right-handed pitching. Okay. When you look at the Giants series, yes, he certainly struggled, but that's uh, what? Uh, Bumgarner, left-hand starter, and uh, Pomerantz, left-hand, yeah. left-hand starter. So People tell that. me Bumgarner's yeah. good. I don't yeah. know. He's decent. I've never seen it. He's been okay. Um, the fact that he struggled against lefties isn't too shocking in today's day and age where guys yeah. lefties struggle against lefties and 
Um, the fact that he's faced a lot of them of late it just hasn't bode well for – I mean, you go back to the Cubs series where he played a little better. He had a couple of hits against left-handed pitchers. So, yeah. Um, it, it's probably sits worse right now because he is, I think, like one for his last 18, whatever <laughs> it is. But, you know, before that he was on a streak where I think over the last – or previous 12 games he was hitting around 350. So yeah. I don't know that you're going to – I think I think it always looks worse when you compare it to, okay, we have our other guy who came up around the same time. He was hitting 425. Yes. And we yes. remember this – Rookie of the Year, all, like two-time All-Star before he got hurt. But at the end of the day, I mean, his first year back, kind of feeling into things, if he hits 250 around the All-Star break, I'll be pretty happy with that. Yes. Mm. Yes. It, 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 cut, it cut quick. I was expecting more Rick because I always want more Rick. But Yeah, cut right during Rick's voice. I hurt my it's, soul. It's same thing. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> w- basically he's a good player, but – He's seeing do, some. He's seeing better. some tough Maybe. times. Uh-huh. Uh, he is off dairy, so somebody had suggested that he just eat some cheese and ice cream and get back to you know. Cody Bellinger eats yeah. like all, pizza and ice cream every day. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and plays that. Mario Kart. Is that what they do? Well, I don't Mario know if Party, he's, Mario Kart. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> when he came up to JT, he's like, "Bro, Mario Kart starting." <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's my best Bellinger voice, by the way. Um, Well-oiled machine over there. Hey, at least 100%. it's no uh, no Red Sox. It's not it's Boston honestly. where they took away their Fortnite or whatever it is. Damn, um, we had somebody in the, li- in the stream, Grumpy Dodgers fan, he says that maybe consider batting Seager lower? Is that something that, that you make think? make a lick of sense. Well, here's the thing. There's a, there's a certain... Je ne sais quoi? Not je ne sais quoi. A theory... That, that it word. takes pressure off of players, which might be true to a certain extent, because that's what they did with Puig. If you yes. remember, Puig struggled very, very much in the top four spots in the lineup when he moved him down to fifth and lower. Remember when he moved him down to the eighth spot for like a decent amount of time, yeah. and then he moved back to the seventh spot and then six, and that's kind of where he floated for a lot of last year. He was really good. Like that was one of his better Dodger seasons. Yeah, it, it's it's about time to at least, the very least, if you're going to play him every day. Take him out of that two hole. Shuffle it. it. Yeah, he's he's Shuffle a it. six or seven guy until he gets it right. Because he's not uh, he's not terribly far off. Casting his trash says this is what happens when you start drinking oat milk. He also said Jeter Downs is better. <laughs> well, he did have that. Jeet did have that three hit game. Yeah, that three hit game. So. And uh, we have uh, Jeter Downs in not here, not on the show today, but a Jeter Downs interview is coming up pretty soon. Our friend Tim, Mr. Rogers himself, Tim uh, SD Dodger, did an interview with him, I believe, today in Rancho. So. Jeet, nice kid. Oh, I'd like to clarify. A grumpy Dodgers fan, Dodgers fan apparently said, don't do that to Corey. Do that to CT3. Wow. They're already they? doing that to CT3. <laughs> He's already down. I don't know how much further down he can move him. I don't know. I'd, I'd put Ryu ahead of him. Uh, baby Ryu? Baby. Baby. Ba- babe. Babe Ryu. Babe Ryu. That's so cool. So, polls every week on our Twitter and then occasionally... When I'm not doing it, uh, occasionally on Instagram, we we run our weekly polls Mm. to kind of get a sense of how upset Dodgers Nation is right now. And it's usually pretty nicely correlated to the uh, winning percentage for the week for the week. But give it give us some uh, give us some magic. So the first one is one of my favorites because it's uh, a it's this. I feel like this one is the most volatile. Like it just it just moves up and down so much. And it's uh, your opinions. Do you approve of the do- of the job that Dave Roberts has done so far this season? Mm-hmm. 67% say yes, 12% say no, and 21% say undecided. And my favorite part are fence sitters because they're just like, I don't know, man. Like, wh- <laughs> the, My favorite thing is that people who don't know take the time to vote that they don't know, and I love that so much. There's a request in those. If you vote undecided, you're supposed to tell us why. Yeah, but we don't have the, the – the responses don't line up to the number of responses mm-hmm. undecided, but that's okay. And moving on to offense, I don't think you can really be upset at this offense. They've had a couple games where they've been lackluster, haven't scored the number of runs they have, but for the most part, they're the one of the best offenses in baseball. Stop complaining. We have the player of the month. Everyone shut up. Yep. 86% yes. A resounding 86% yes. 6% no. And still 8% undecided. I love you. I love you, undecided. He's part of that undecided vote. That's what, if you were running for some form of office, you would go for that undecided vote. Oh, 100%. And you'd lose. I'd be like, if you don't know who you're voting for. <laughs> I would 100% go for that 8%. Percent. Oh, 100%. Good, good with numbers. Can't remember Osh. Ding. Oh wait, I have a button for that. We also have weekly, uh, you know, uh, with a, on top of the polls every uh, every Thursday, it comes out uh, a new series where we're talking about kind of who's not, who's hot, who's not, sort of a stock up, stock down, and hopefully it could help some of you fantasy baseball folk. Even though again, I don't know what's wrong with you if you do that, but 
Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't have too many fantasy baseball players no. on our on our squad. We no. tried to start one up for fun, but and then uh, I kicked everybody out of general chat. We all suck at it, and <laughs> nobody really wanted to compete with the two guys that do it. Yeah, it's fair. They're good at it. Three up uh, are JT, Julio, and Kershaw, which makes a lot of sense. Kershaw, I think, is the goat. <laughs> He he's not he's drinking that goat milk. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Not no, oat, oat milk, milk, it's goat milk. Yeah. See what happens there, guys. Uh and of course, easy enough. Stock down. We got Corey. Jock has been kind of going through it too. And Kenta is becoming a bit of a concern. We're not gonna dig too much into those today, just because we've got a lot and you know it's about that time. We we near, you know, cracking open an own beer, uh, a new beer after uh, this stuff. But um, you know, you know yeah, the words. I understand. But, uh, yeah, check those ar- articles out, DodgersNation.com. Uh, you know, let us know what you'd like to see in those. And, and if somebody's wrong, da- if Daniel's wrong, yell at him. Yeah, at him make sure you vote on those uh, polls on our Twitter weekly because and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna really need your guys' input on those because <clears throat> we like that. You know, right. We Let's, have our opinions, but you guys' are better, apparently. No. Yes. Yes. Somewhere. Undecided. <laughs> Undecided. 8%. <laughs> All right. Let's quickly preview. We got two more things and let's get out of here. Tweet of the week is going to be great. I think everybody's going to love it. Love I'm going to love it. Week. But quickly preview the San Diego series. Go. Number one, San Diego. Uh, well, I guess number one is that Manny Machado. We get to see him again. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> I still love Manny, man. I'm, a lot I'm, of people don't, but I, 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 I still really like Manny. I really enjoyed his time in L.A., even though people hated it. I fear I fear uh, my first baseman ankles. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Put, Too soon? Put, don't put David Fries over there. He has bad ankles. I, lo- I love you, Matt, but you might have to fall on the sword for the team, B. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> uh, San Diego just lost uh, one of their most highly touted uh, young stars in uh, Tatis Jr. Yeah, uh, he went Fernando. Down. Fernando. Yeah, he yeah, was right at 300. The, he was right there in that rookie of the month conversation. Right, so he'll he'll hit the IL for a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Sucks for baseball. <laughs> Did you see those splits, by the way? Oof. Oh, yeah. That that was, if anybody didn't see it, go look up Fernando Tatis' splits. Oof. It was uncomfortable. And then look up Fernando Oof. Tatis' uh, two grand slams in one inning. <laughs> D- different... Different. thing but good thing uh, <laughs> yeah but that loss is it's unfortunate for baseball but i'm very happy us. it happened right great now great for us yeah, yeah. i appreciate I mean, luis urias is, is a good shortstop but he's not tatis i i think i can ask you this question no. already knowing the answer did but you raise did your you hand? See, did you i did not did you see an 18 and 14 record from the padres is that what they're i, I can't remember 18 and 14 yeah, 18, 18 something like that yeah they have no. 18 wins no what the heck, man? I, I said it. I knew even what, when we did our, our spot the first time with KTLA. Yeah. Um, that was my thing. I I brought it up. I've mentioned it a lot. Like, there's that worry. You know, you knew San Diego was going to be good. Do we think they're going to be this good this early? No. No. I they're mean, not I think an 18 we, both, win we team. both agreed they were about two years off from serious competition. I think and now they have arrived. Where I we, think that it's going to fall off. What we but. all didn't know was Paddock. He's Paddock been has maker. been exceptional. And having somebody like that, Lucchese has been good. And I think we have another clip with Rick talking a bit about that. And all again, all these clips, we're going to have a full uh, Rick Stravaganza on our Twitter tomorrow because he's got stick. some really good stuff. Yes. And, and Rick had, he told me, he's like, I'm down to talk about some San Diego stuff too. I just finished the series preview because, um, you know, it's his job. But, um, Is that what he does? He works in baseball? He does the baseball. Oh, that's good. Um, but, uh, yeah, let, you know what? Let's throw Rick on the screen. Let's have some fun with Rick. No Rick? We don't have Rick? Oh. We're, we're, uh, we're actually keeping it for, uh, for tomorrow. For get, all right. We're going we're gonna, to – I'm getting us. word. I'm getting word uh, visually that we're not going to do – we're not going to have Rick up there. But we will that's have right. it. We, we, we do have some uh, – well, we do have some San Diego stats for you, though. I can be the Rick for today. It's not a good right, do, I'm a terrible Do it break. in Urkel voice and do it pretty quick. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just as Friar Phil blocked me, softy. <laughs> oh, what a so- – come on, Friar Phil. Friar Phil liked one of my tweets, so I'm good. Wow, you famous. Yeah, it wasn't even about San Diego. Uh, <laughs> San Diego is actually one of the worst offensive teams in baseball right now. I mean, in the National League. They've been – they've struggled at the plate. They've struggled <clears> with running, <throat> runners in scoring position. They – yeah, not getting on base a whole lot. They're striking out a lot. Yep. And I think it has to do with the fact that they have a very young team. Yep. Uh, Hosmer got a horrendous start to the season. Um, Again? And he, yeah. And he's supposed to be there. He's supposed to be the guy. Like, remember when he came over and they were like, that's going to be the guy yeah. we build a franchise. Uh-huh. He's still a guy that you can do that around. And he's the reason why you're able to bring over yeah, the Manny Machado. They've really spent some the, money on some questionable players. Will Myers was the first Will one. Will Myers was the real first one to where it was like. <laughs> and really? Will Myers, I think, is struggling to even make contact with the ball. Yeah, they're not. They're not good guys. 
So it, I think it's going to be a fun series. It's all lefties, which is a big concern because, as Rick pointed out, and he, I don't know if he put the stats on that sheet, but Corey is hitting like 150 against lefties. So hopefully this is the weekend where he gets dropped down in the lineup. Because, again, it's all lefties. Uh, it's I don't know. I don't even know how to pronounce the guy, like something like Sid Vicious or something is his last name. The guy that, who started, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Sid Vicious against uh, Maeda on Sunday, which is probably the most concerning one. Because you know how the Dodgers do against rookies. Um, luckily, they do miss Paddock this this uh, do, particular weekend. Great. But Luke Casey's love, good. I would love to see them bite Paddock, though. Bite him? Not like, like literally bite him. Like, just like, like ah. him well. Just to give you an idea of what to what to look for in the San Diego <laughs> series, real quick, on Cody Bellinger, he is the team is fifteen and six when he drives in a run, sixteen and four when he scores a run, and ten and three when he hits a home run. So they don't lose many games when Cody Bellinger hits. Who would have thought? To number two hitter. Yeah. And sometimes number three hitter. Sometimes number and three. And you know what? You need to score the points to win the sports game. And if the guy's not there to, to score a point for you, it doesn't work. Just uh, saying. Points. Just saying. As, as John Madden would say. <laughs> we all came gotta, full circle. You want to win points. Blue Heaven you tweet of the week. Points. Blue Heaven tweet of the week, and then it's time to get out of here. All right, last one here for Jay-Z. He's been great. He's here representing the Scotts Field Refurbishment Program. Really a great sport. Uh, going through all these callers. Callie in Connecticut. What's going on, Callie? Hey. Hey. Well, Mr. Utley, um, I just want to say to you real quick. Yeah. I do appreciate that you've worked with dogs and kids. I've heard about that. Good for you. But that's the last thing I'm going to tell you that I really respect about you. If you came out here and you were telling me, you know, I liked being the villain. I didn't really care. It was fun for me. It was part of the game. You might have even respected that a little bit more, but it doesn't really seem like you care about anything. So <laughs> I just need you to know as Mets fans, how annoying it was to come and watch you. I mean, I respect that you're a good player. I understand that. But when you took out my shortstop in the playoffs, that wasn't about talent. That was just being dirty. And I don't care how long you told me that was just you being old school. That was you being dirty because that's what you do. And right, thank I'm sorry. You, I mean, you, you, you have a nice to see you, sweetheart. You have a nice <laughs> well, look, everybody's got a take on it, right? Of course. It's like such next level, like, like, Headiness that yeah. I just love it so much because he can just smile and be like, that happened. I did that. Oh, man, Pop Pop, you are the man. Chase not, Utley, you are the man. I still wish he was on the team. Yes. You know, if he was still on the team, Bueller wouldn't be tipping his pitches. He's our second best pitching coach. Sorry, Mark Pryor. Just saying. Just we, saying. We <laughs> Never heard of her. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Find us on the internet machine. That is DodgersNation.com. You can subscribe to this. We're a podcast. Uh, we're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Player FM. Like all the spots, you can find podcast noises. We're going to be on them. We are going to be on them. Yes. Yeah, and we're here, obviously, every Thursday, and we like doing this stuff with you guys, so make sure that when we are on, you hit those comments hard and uh, – Furiously, yes. As in, like a good furious, not like an angry. Mash furious. that Just like, heart you know button. The, you know the cat that does the typing, like rapidly. <laughs> yes, do that. Yeah, I That's know one that of gift. your favorite gifts. Yes. I know it is. It's glorious. Thank you so much to our crack production team around here. We got Mr. Zed over there, Tamara over there, and of course Mr. Gary Lee in the background laughing up at uh, Osh. Uh, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Brooke Me Three. This guy over here is at Real FRG on the Internet Machine, and you can find mm -hmm. us online at DodgersNation.com, where you can find all breaking news. Some of the best editorial stories you'll ever see. And, <laughs> of course, the one, the only, the Blue Heaven Podcast. That is straight up truth. True, that's the true true. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We will see you next Thursday. Bye. Bye.